Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. We have another beautiful video going up for 3D. Uh, I hope you read a little bit more about the vectors. Today we're going to be talking about matrices and how they work. And I'm not going to do an in-depth tutorial, just like I didn't do an in-depth tutorial, depth tutorial, excuse me, on the uh, vectors. But yeah, basically I'm just going to go through what you can do with matrices kind of and then we'll learn as we go because you'll have to you have to see most of you will have to see how they work in practice to understand why we use matrices right but just before we go go ahead just try to remember that everything we do in 3d is using points and a point in space has three coordinates right it's an x coordinate y coordinate and a z coordinate and triangles are created using three uh, of these beautiful points and how we move them around in the world that is what I'm trying to tell you right here with matrices that's why we use matrices to move them around and I'll come to that further down so I hope this is gonna be an alright overview of matrices and why we use them if you don't understand like I said just wait don't freak out too much we'll, we'll go we'll get to that a little later alright uh, but let's start off here uh, let me show you this is basically a matrix right this is a matrix and all it is is just a bunch of numbers in a little box here all right it's beautiful so it has two rows and three columns all right one two three four five six one four two five three six so two rows three columns two x three matrix a two times three matrix remember that rows x columns all right and what we're gonna do we're gonna do here you can read a little bit more about this if we want to get a certain value for it will be at a, a row two column one row two column one all right that would be a four so just remember that uh, anywho addition and subtraction really easy we use scalars right so you add a matrix with a scalar we add the scalar to the matrix to be correct and that's really straightforward you just add it to every element in the matrix and you get the resulting matrix all right, one plus three, three plus three, blah 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 blah. All that it's all good. Same thing with subtraction, easy peasy, no problems. Uh, where it gets a little bit more complicated is when you add two matrices together. It's not that much more complicated. It's just a, a rule that obviously they have to be the exact same dimensions to be able to do this. See, uh, they have to be four by or two by two, two by two, or three by three, three by three, all that stuff. Uh, but otherwise, it's just the same thing. Just one plus five, two plus six. 3 plus 7, 4 plus 8. So element by element. All right, the same element added in both of the matrices. And then you'll get the resulting matrix. Same thing with uh, subtraction. Easy peasy. Now, the little bit more difficult part to remember is, well, not here. Yeah, it comes down here. Well, this is simple matrix scalar products. You just multiply 2, for example, into this matrix. Same thing as addition and subtraction. Boom, element, 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 element. Bam, you get a new beautiful matrix right there. Uh, so try to do this on paper if you want. It's not that important, uh, or it's not that hard to remember. Rather, it's important. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is the more important part: matrix, matrix multiplication. So, why are we doing this? Well, a vector can also be seen as a matrix, right? A vector or a point. A point is an x, y, z coordinate, and we can multiply them with matrices. That's how we can multiply a bunch of points with the same matrix to actually move them around in the world. That's why we're learning this. Now, the rules for matrix matrix multiplication uh, is it's pretty easy, but it's sometimes it's hard to remember. It's every row in the first matrix is multiplied by the column in the other one. All right, so 1 times 5 plus 2 times 7. 1 times 5 plus 2 times 7. 3 times 6 plus 4 times 8. Or no, 3 times 5 plus 4 times 7. So yeah, the whole matrix multiplied with this column, the whole matrix multiplied by this column. And then you get these different values, as you can see here. Now, as you, <laughs> I had this in front of me, I still don't remember how to do it. That's how hard it is for me to remember these. But there is a rule. Um, you can only multiply two matrices if the number of columns on the left-hand side matrix is equal to the number of rows on the right-hand side. Now, if you remember how we wrote them, we wrote it row x column, right? So the way you can remember that is every time you get a matrix multiplication, say we have a 2x3 matrix and we have a 3x2 matrix. 
the number of rows in or number of columns in the first one has to be equal to the number of rows in the first one so these two have always got to match all right boom these two always have to match and then you're fine so a vector is basically a we write them like this right if we had a vector it would be x a y z and if we had a matrix say it had four numbers zero 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 whatever 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 you know just like four or no three times three sorry ignore the last one just three times three just a bunch of zeros this would be a 3x3 matrix and this would be a 3x1 matrix and these match so that means we can multiply them all right so that's the basic rule try to remember that it's visualized here beautifully for you guys and grills all right easy peasy just remember that so yeah read about it a little more here i sure have to uh, and we'll be good all right mm. So this is the rule we're going to be using later on. Now, this is the 3x3 matrix. Here you go. Check out. Check this out. This is how the multiplication is done. And because of this, and also, yeah, I don't want to forget, it's non-commutative. And that means that the order is really important. If this matrix is multiplied with this matrix in this order, it won't be the same if this matrix is on this side on the left side and you multiply it, right? So A times B is not the same as B times A. That means not commutative all right it's non-commutative remember that the order is really important for the result to come out the way you want now you could in this case you could you should get two different results in our case we always want in OpenGL we always want the vector on the right side uh, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit why we do this stuff all right uh, so matrix and vector multiplication the identity matrix something you'll come across a bunch of times and that is just a empty matrix with ones across just across like this right boom easy peasy that's an identity matrix it doesn't really do much i'll go through this with you and i'll show you why this works now this is a 4x4 matrix and this is a 4x1 matrix so remember we can multiply these this is our vector all right for example this is going to be our vector x y z and w now the w component is not a point in the screen really it's more used to it's more used for the 3D effect later on, uh, but it's important. So we have to keep that uh, one later on. I'll show you guys in, in scaling and all that stuff. But never mind. Uh, the identity matrix multiply with a vector like this. In this order, will give you the same things back. So it won't. An identity matrix won't change the content of the vector. All right. That's good to know. That's really important to know. Now what happens here is we multiply this whole. Um, row with the whole vector this row with the vector this row with the vector this row with the vector so I hope some of you probably see it already but what happens is this one will be multiplied by this one this zero with the y the zero with this and this zero with the w that means that we'll get one times one plus zero times two plus zero times three plus zero times four so the x value will be uh, affected by this value here so whatever we write here will affect the x value. So if it was a 2 here, we'd have 2 times 1, 0 times 2, plus 0 times 2, plus 0 times 3, plus 0 times 4. That would give us just 2 times 1, because everything else is 0, right? So we'll just have this value left here. This would be 2 times 1. Now, for the y value, we have to write whatever we want to affect the y value, we'd write it here. That's why we leave this 0, because this is only for the y value. If we write anything here... It will affect the x value as well so everything here affects the x value y z and w all right right here so this would be 0 times 1 1 times 2 0 times 3 plus 0 times 4 so that just leaves us 1 times 2 right everything else is 0 and the same thing here 0 times 1 0 times 2 1 times 3 0 times 4 that leaves us with 1 times 3 here so I hope you see where that's going and here you can read a little bit more about it and learn now this all might seem like magic still to you guys and grill but don't worry it will fall into place in your head later i didn't understand this for a while uh but let's get started just this i'm not gonna go deep into this right now you have to read about this and we'll get to this as we program but i want to show you at least why we use matrices to scale and transform vectors now scaling is exactly what you think i mean you you take a 
a vector and you scale it with a certain uh, certain amount to make it bigger or smaller all right so if you scale something by two it will be double as big right and imagine vectors being the corners of your squares and your cubes or whatever in 3d space and you can scale the whole cube up by two by multiplying the every point in that cube with a scaling matrix and how the scaling matrix works is first you just read about this here all this stuff I'm just gonna show you quickly now this is for not this is for uniform scaling non uniform scaling where you have like a rectangle or like something that's stretched out and, and stuff like that uh, it, it's a little different but whatever we'll, we'll just have to just remember the uniform and non uniform for later it has to do with the normals and stuff but anywho remember the identity matrix I just talked about one 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 and our vector see how this point affects the x value this point affects the y value this one affects the z value and this one affects the w now the w we always want to be leave uh, to one so we don't want it to change we don't want anything to affect the w value so just leave that alone it has to do with the 3d stuff like you can read here uh, and perspective and stuff like that well i'll talk to, talk about that later anywho if we have ones here that means the x y and z values will still be one at the end of the multiplication but if we want to scale something by two and we want to uniformly scale it meaning that everything is going to be scaled by the same number we're going to put a two here two here and a two here that means that will be two times x two times y two times z a non-uniform scale will be two one or three you know what i mean two one three or something like that something that scales things differently in in different coordinates but a uniform scale will be two 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 or three 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 or whatever it will be three times as big see how these affect this value right here all right so yes the four scale stays one and that's good translation then we put all our things over here all right and it says y here I'm not really sure about that right now but the thing that would happen would be one times x zero times y and yeah we we because we want to add it we don't want to multiply it so what it does it since we want to add the translation translation is moving stuff around so you have a point in, in space a cube or a square or whatever triangle every point will be moved by the same amount so if we have move it by two or three points values or whatever you want to call it to the right we'd have to just change the x value right so we want to have these two zero we don't want to add anything to the y and z values but we still want them to be the same we don't want to multiply them by zero or whatever we just want them to be the same so they will be added zero will be added to those two but two or three or whatever you want will be added to the x value so say that we want to move our thingy to the right all right every point in that triangle will be moved to the right so then we'll have three here zero and zero what will happen then it will have one times x zero times y plus zero times y plus zero times z plus three times one all right so you see the th only thing that will be left is one times what the x value was so maybe it's five right now then plus zero plus zero plus three so our new value will be eight our new x value will, will be eight now the same thing again for the next y value so to calculate to move the y if we want to move it up or something like that we'd put something here we'd put three here or whatever then it'll be zero times x plus one times y whatever y was before say it's two and we're moving it by three additional three so zero plus x zero times x plus one times y plus zero times z plus three times one so that leaves us with two plus three and a new y value of five and the same thing for z now the w value we still want to be one so we just leave uh, a one right here remember that i know it might be a little complicated right now i hope i'm actually showing you what's going on but just trying to remember these things as we go on to the next videos all right you don't have to know all this right now completely especially rotation might seem a little complicated right now. just read about this but it's the same principle what we do basically quickly is the exact same thing we just rotate if we want to rotate the cube along the x-axis all right it's going to flip around it's going to flip around the x-axis now think of this 
as the x-axis and y and z-axis. So it's going to move in a circle like this. If we want to move something across the y-axis, it's going to kind of rotate like this, like on the ground, you know? Imagine it's something sitting on the ground, rotating, spinning. A z-value rotation would be it kind of rolling in front of you, rolling around in front of you, all right? So that's the difference. So now if you want to rotate something along the x-axis, you leave the x-axis to whatever it was before, and you change all the other axes, all right? So the y and the z will be rotating, not the x, because we want to move it around the x-axis. Same thing for y and z. Just try to remember that kind of all this complicated math, whatever. There are mathematical matrices already defined for us to use, really simple, in the GLM library, so we don't have to worry about creating our own. You could if you want to, but yeah. So the idea is we use these three matrices. It's called a model matrix for your object. Imagine you're having a cube. You want to put it into a world space. You want to move it around the world. All right, so there are different spaces. We're going to be talking about that. So we start off in model space where the model is not in the world yet. It's just around its own origin. Zero, zero is in the middle of our model. When we multiply it with these three scale, translation, and rotation matrices, we put it into world space. Now the origin is in the world. Zero is in the world. And the cube is somewhere in the world relative to that origin. So the cube might be in another position, rotated somewhere, and kind of scaled, or whatever, in the world. So now we're in world space. And to do that, we combine the matrices. Now, for reasons you're going to see later in the graphics card, we want to send stuff. We want to send all these three matrices uh, at once. And we're going to combine them and send them as one big matrix. Now, beautiful thing about the combining matrices is that if you read here, you'll see that if you multiply them in a certain order, uh, from right to left, I think it was, or from, yeah, from right to left, I think, something like that. Uh, we'll see that later anyway. Then we'll preserve it, and we can just multiply all our points with this one weight matrix with our customized translation and scale values to actually change that point. And you can read about it here, all right? And in, in practice, we'll get this a little later. Just remember that this is how we translate stuff around in 3D, move it around, scale it, and rotate it. Uh, later, we'll be looking at the view matrix, which is our camera. And we'll be looking at the tra uh, perspective matrix, which uses field of view and kind of puts everything in a 3D perspective. So things further away look smaller and stuff like that. So it's just a really quick overview. Uh, another thing to remember just quickly, no nothing really to freak out about, but a view matrix, a camera in 3D is not really what you think it is. You don't move the camera in the world. You move the world around and it gives you the illusion that you have a camera. So from a, a certain perspective, everything is going to move in the opposite way you're moving the camera, right? So if you want to look to the left, everything has to move to the right. So that's how it's going to work. That's how we're going to, that's how cameras are created. So that's a little fun fact next time you're playing a game or whatever. Uh, you can think about that. So I hope this is giving you a all right overview of matrices. I'm sorry, I'm not really that good at math. But hopefully you guys and grills know what's the dealio with these matrices. And you can keep learning and you can keep reading here. I really recommend you to read this stuff. Even if you're not that into math, just go ahead and check it out. I don't know. You don't have to know all this math. Screw all this. You know, we're going to be using the already programmed libraries. But at least you know what they do. When you see this, you, you get a translation matrix and you send in your point in 3D space. And you translate it with a certain... Uh, with some certain values, you'll know what happens, right? So just go ahead and do that. Thanks for watching, as always. Next video, we're going to be initializing all the libraries we need, one by one. And uh, soon, we'll be ready to program. So thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video, all right? Bye-bye.